Michael Greenacre is visiting Martin Greve at the Alfred Wegener Institute in Bremerhaven, Germany. They are going to prepare the final version of their paper on the analysis of fatty acid data to be published by LNO Methods. Martin is head of marine biochemistry and here is his laboratory. Martin, what machine is this? This is a gas chromatograph, so this machine is giving me a broad range of fatty acid composition of marine organisms. Here we could see a chromatogram of a copepod, a marine zooplankton organism. Each peak refers to a specific fatty acid compound. Eventually, we will gain a high number of fatty acid data sets to be evaluated with multivariate statistical methods. In our article, we treat two fatty acid data sets. One is obtained from a sample of copepods, specifically Calanus glacialis, and the other from amphipods. Here we just give a short overview of the copepod analysis with this data set. 42 copepods and 40 fatty acids, showing here just a few rows and columns. The rows sum to 100% because these are true compositional data. The problem with compositional data is that the data set could have been bigger if more fatty acids had been included, or smaller if some were eliminated. To take an extreme example, suppose three of the fatty acids are retained and the others omitted. After renormalizing the data to sum to 100%, all the values in the table have changed. Now, using classical statistical measures such as means, standard deviations, correlations, etc. have no meaning because they depend on the particular mix of fatty acids included in the study. In other words, the relationships between the three fatty acids that have been retained at the bottom, of, at the bottom table would be different from their relationships in the fuller table, the full composition at the top. What does stay constant are the ratios between the fatty acid values. For example, the ratio between 16,0 and 16N7 for the first sample is 1.86. In the subcomposition, even though the numbers are different, the ratio is still 1.86. So, for the analysis of compositional data, we use fatty acid ratios. And because ratios are compared on a multiplicative scale, the logarithms, the logarithms of ratios are used, that is, log ratios. Now, any compositional data set has a total log ratio variance, and it's that variance we hope to explain in a simple way. This particular data set has a total log ratio variance equal to the variances of all the pairwise log ratios that can be formed. In this example with 40 fatty acids, there are 40 times 39 over 2, that's equal to 780 unique pairs of fatty acids, and thus there are 780 different ratios. But there are many interdependencies between them, and according to theory, only 39 independent log ratios are required to explain all the variance of the data. That's one less than the number of columns. However, even better, a much smaller set of log ratios can explain a very high percentage of variance. In an article in Mathematical Geosciences, one of the principal journals for publications on compositional data analysis, Greenacre described a stepwise algorithm for identifying a small set of independent log ratios that explain almost all of the variance. Now, our idea was not to choose the set of log ratios purely statistically, but to combine the statistical objective of maximizing explained log ratio variance with domain knowledge in marine biochemistry. So here we are, Michael on the left, preparing a list of the top 20 log ratios, when he's not playing the piano, that is, 
from the best one downwards in terms of explaining log ratio variance. The differences between these alternatives were sometimes quite small. So sending them over to Martin, it was his turn to consider the list. Martin was often okay with the best one, but sometimes preferred one a bit lower down on the list which had more biochemical relevance for describing copepods. So he would send back his choice to Michael, who had to stop playing the piano again, and who prepared another set of top 20 uh, log ratios to send back to Martin. And this process continued iteratively until a list of fatty acid log ratios with high explained variance and clear substantive interpretation was obtained. So here are the results of the copepod study. And the results will be represented by a network graph on the right. The first ratio chosen was 16, 0 divided by 18, 4, N3 explaining already, just by itself, 54.3% of the total log ratio variance. Clearly a very important ratio in the data set. This is represented on the right by the denominator fatty acid pointing to the numerator one, although it actually makes no difference to variance explained which way the arrow points. The next ratio chosen brought explained variance up by another 20% uh, percentage points, more than 20%, to 75.3%. And it also has 16 zero in the numerator, so the fatty acid on the right points again to 16 zero. And so we carry on for the third fatty acid ratio pair, a separate pair that's linked separately from the others. And the fourth one actually links the two sets together, and now we're up to 85.1% variance explained. The fifth log ratio pair brings up to 88.4%. And finally, we have the six ratios, which are log ratios. These uh, explain 91% of the variance, and we stop there because the subsequent ratios did not have a clear biochemical interpretation. So using just these six log ratios, remember that 39 of them would be needed to explain 100% of the variance in this example. But using just six of them, we essentially have retained the main structure of the data set and can perform principal components analysis, for example, of the log ratios in a much simpler way. This has been a very brief overview of the first of the two case studies. So let's go back to uh, Martin's lab at RV in Bremerhaven and see what's going on. Well, I enjoyed my collaboration with Martin. From my side, I tried to introduce a innovation, a statistical innovation into biochemistry. Well, I got a new method from Michael, and uh, so this helps a lot in, to interpret all the data of fatty acids and uh, other lipid compounds we've got so far. So, read our article.